For over 40 years, the Vancouver Academy of Music has set the highest standards for music education in Western Canada. Cellist Joseph Elworthy is a graduate of the Vancouver Academy of Music, a world-class musician and executive director of the Vancouver Academy of Music, where he is head of the cello department. His impressive career has taken him to Juilliard, Yale, Carnegie Hall, and on international world tours. It is my pleasure to welcome Joseph Elworthy to Studio 4 to tell us more. Dare I say welcome home. It's a pleasure to be here. Mm, it's a pleasure to meet you. Yes, thank you. And a pleasure to hear you play earlier this morning. What a way for us to start the day. Yes. Well, that's part of my ritual. You know, as a, as a musician, the only guaranteed practice time is first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, Because you can't think of an excuse. There's no excuse, yes. <laughs> you know, th imagine how many hours you've practiced to get where you are. Yeah. It's actually, it's a fascinating question at the Academy a lot of um, parents, you, you know, will ask me, you know, uh, what does it take in order to achieve a very high level of competence? And I recently came across something that actually put it in, in uh, quantitative terms. What it takes, Fanny, is 10,000 hours. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 10,000 hours of practice to reach a high level. Now, the difference between uh, perhaps one of our students and a Mozart is that an academy student will uh, reach that level when they're 18. Mozart would have reached it when he was eight. I hear tell. <laughs> However, I was reading a fan letter to you from one of your fans, and he said he was like two years behind you mm -hmm. uh, in, in the Vancouver Academy, yes. and he knew you were way ahead of him and that you were in a league of your own. He knew. Well, yeah. That's very flattering. Uh, it's interesting, at, at the younger age of musical development, um, quite often, similar to athletics, the um, disparity between abilities seems very large, and it really levels out as, mm -hmm. as uh, you know, students mature. Sure. So it's, uh, it's quite, um, it's important for our young, talented students to, uh, you know, keep their heads on their shoulders and, and keep their egos in check and realize that it's, it's a long journey that, that never ends. However, if you have sat through an audition, and I'm sure you've had and you've heard, and uh, a chorus, Shervosik, Shervosik gets up and plays the violin, and you yes. just know. You say, oh, he's way better than the other kids. <laughs> but that doesn't mean, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, it is a very subjective thing. I mean, you know, there's definitely the, the spark of, of genius and talent and mm -hmm. prodigious talent in, in young musicians. Uh, but, but there are famous examples of, of uh, unique artists who matured mm -hmm. later on and their voice became something that uh, was, uh, you know, sure. incredibly profound. Well, like athletes, uh, there's natural born athletes and yes. they're lazy, some. <laughs> and then there are tenacious athletes who would do yes. anything to get there. Yes. What about the love of it, the love of the cello? Was it immediate for you? How uh, old were you when you started? I started when I was four. Four. And uh, my parents are, are Irish, so mm -hmm. music was something, it was at the kitchen In table. The soul. Yes, exactly. It was sort of this oral tradition. And uh, so I, I was very um, excited about playing music. Frankly speaking, when my father said, you're going to start the cello, I had no idea what the cello was. Really? Uh, he picked it. He picked it. Uh, I was born the, years, uh, the year that the great Spanish cellist Pablo Casals oh. passed away great humanitarian yes. musician and so my parents felt that this you know he was someone that really influenced them and uh, they felt it would be wonderful for, for their son mm -hmm. to take up this instrument. Wow and who mentored you along the way? If, if A teacher, somebody who really tweaked your abilities? Well right from the early stages at the Vancouver Academy of Music I had a phenomenal teacher Audrey Nodwell Mm. who is now my colleague, which is mm. a kind of interesting sort of generational mm -hmm. uh, shift. Uh, my uh, main mentor was Aldo Pariso at Yale University right. and later at the Juilliard School. And one of the most um, proud accomplishments for me was to bring Professor Pariso to Vancouver a year and a half ago. We had the Pariso Cello Fest and he was uh, in his early 90s. Wow. Uh, he's been a Yale professor for over 50 years. Aldo Parasil. That's what right. a thrill to be in his class. Oh, absolutely. For you. Yes. Did you apply to Yale or did they call you and say, you know what, we like a mix at Yale and we, <laughs> we need a cellist in the <laughs> <That's> Yale Orchestra. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's interesting actually, the pathway. Um, I first met Mr. Parasil at the Bounce Center mm. 
when I was Great center. when I was 12. Mm -hmm. um, you know, an incredible Canadian institution. I mean, it's amazing how um, our country supports yes. our young artists. Yeah. And so I had this wonderful uh, introduction to him. Uh, it was very apparent to me that this was the person that I wanted to to study mm -hmm. with, and I, I spent uh, over 10 years learning comprehensively a school of cello playing and a way a way of looking at life from this incredibly influential and man. And did you uh, assist him in teaching at all? Um, in many ways, I was uh, helping him with uh, with some of his younger students mm -hmm. uh, in, in imparting advice. Uh, his um, his class at Yale and at Juilliard was a, 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 an open exchange. It, we were all basically on uh, you know collegial mm -hmm. level and exchanging right. ideas. And when you played Carnegie Hall, I bet you thanked him. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> the Bach cello suites. This is magnificent. Thank you. Uh, two. Yes. Two for the price of one. Yes. I like that. Yes. Tell me what uh, you played earlier this morning. I played the prelude from the first cello suite in mm -hmm. G major. It's probably the most famous movement of the six mm -hmm. cello suites. If you can find G major. Yes. And yes. you can. Yes. Let's <laughs> take a listen. Thank you. good bow work. <laughs> is that a compliment? Uh, yeah, absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the coordination between the hands is something that we're constantly... For sure. I didn't see working. any rosin flying off the horsehair. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you knew that in your soul. It's all part it's of the plan. It's all there. I didn't see any music, no sheet music. Did you do that on one take this morning? That was a one take. Really? Yes. Yes. What, what does it feel like for you to watch you play? Well, it's a strange sort of out-of-body experience. Mm. Um, you know, I think musicians, we are notoriously self-critical, and I think that's absolutely essential. Uh, but at a certain point, it's uh, important to just look at the big picture and realize mm -hmm. that we're uh, transmitting right. art. And when you're transmitting art, where is your brain? Are you thinking uh, CDAE, major, minor, allegro? <laughs> Or are you lost in it? Well, it's, it's a fascinating question because there are so many um, possibilities. And I find that I, I don't try to sort of uh, uh, 
predetermine what my, my thought pattern is going to be mm -hmm. for any piece. Uh, quite often when I'm playing music of Bach, you're aware of the sort of, for me, the historical context of the music. I'm thinking about Bach. This is someone who, you know, had, you know, over 20 children and, and was uh, someone who wasn't necessarily famous in his lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I try to immerse myself in that, in that historical period which I find can be just a whole sort of well of inspiration. Sure. Part of the centering uh, when you're in recital, when you're in recital yes. by yourself. Yes. Is, is it tougher than, than in a, a chamber group or a trio? Uh, well, I, is I it think... Is more pressure for you? I, I think, uh, I mean, the chamber music aspect, just the uh, collaborative nature is, is really mm -hmm. inspiring. Mm -hmm. And it's like a conversation between friends. Um, but there's something also wonderfully solitary about a solo performance where you can really get lost in your own kind of sure. personal sure. narrative. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, the cello, a rare cello, Yes, it's set on the paper. 1760, really? Where did you get it? Uh, well, it, um, one of our wonderful academy patrons mm -hmm. uh, donated it to the school. Um, it's a very rare cello that was played by a very famous cellist named Hugo Becker oh. in the mid-1800s. And the cello uh, is worth a, approximately the, the price of a house in anywhere except Vancouver. <laughs> Maybe <laughs> really? in Vancouver it's a small one it's bedroom apartment. It's a small apartment. house. Well, yes. it's like a Strad. Yeah, it's the same period, same, but same vintage. But in Stradivarius, they loan them. Yes. Like their people have collections, and if you're a fabulous musician, you're loaned this. So do you own this, or are, is it on loan from the academy? No, it was donated to the school, and so I'm, I'm, I have use of it through the school. How great. So yes. it's a Ferdinando Galliano? Yes. Mm. What about the bow? Uh, the bow I own. Okay. <laughs> the you bow, can afford that. Yes, the bow I can, I can just about afford. Um, so Italian instruments are, you know, really the sought-after, um, you know, choice for professionals and for for a bow French bows are are really where it's mm. at and this is a beautiful um, Lamy bow which was made in Paris in the turn of the 19th century oh my, oh my. bows yeah. are expensive for people who don't know yes trust me yes <laughs> yes uh, the Vancouver Academy of Music Vanier Park what a marvelous place yes. uh, piano voice yes. cello violin yeah. viola yes. any age wh how early but yes well we have uh, a new programs that sort of deal with both age spectrums. We have an early childhood program um, mm. and a adult learning program. So we're trying to expand our base uh, and we're really excited with, uh, with our new initiatives. I like that, adult learning. Adult learning, You don't yes. have to have ever played an instrument? No. You can be a beginner? Absolutely, yes. How lovely, because when you have time in your senior years to pursue music, what a great thing to do. Well, we're you have really, time to practice. We're really excited also about the potential for cross-generational exchange mm -hmm. between our, our young students and our you know, mature students. And quite often that takes the form of parents and, and uh, children. So, Absolutely. Yeah. As your children are uh, yes. uh, in the academy. Full yes. circle. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for playing for us. Joseph Elworthy, Bach Cello Suites, two CDs in this beautiful album.